and go through. Um, how leading is reduced is with proper lubrication or with a paper patch, which was an early form of jacketing. Uh, with black powder, it forms a sufficient seal where the bullet won't let up the barrel, okay, under the right circumstances. Bore condition defects like pitting and that may affect it. But I haven't seen any trouble, and I haven't seen any letting. I fired some, and they don't let the barrel up. Um, and again, in all these old guns, a lot of the people that have more experience than me, years more experience, have all used smokeless. They say there's nothing wrong with it. But it comes down to if you're shooting under 100 yards or using it for hunting, reduced smokeless loads are fine, you know, at 100 to under 200 yards. Most of the guys that shoot competition that say if you want to get the accuracy and long range potential out of these guns, you kind of want to stick with black powder. That way if you're making three, four, five hundred yard shots, that's where the difference where it's better. And like I said, I think most people don't like the idea of the cleaning. They have to be kind of real particular and pay attention and they consider it extra work. Some people I know don't clean their guns at all. Personally, I thoroughly clean all my weapons, no matter what I'm shooting, black powder, smokeless, and the same day I'm done shooting. Very rarely will I ever clean the guns the next day or something. I always leave time, come home, get the guns cleaned up, make sure there's nothing wrong with them, get them back in storage. So, again, it's all a matter of personal choice. I decided to go with the black powder. And another thing, the alloy used for the black powder must be only an alloy of tin and lead only, nothing else. Even if you decide to use black powder, do not use bullets that have uh, are alloyed like with wheel weights or hard alloy. Some of the guys use them in a gun, but are they using it in a gun that's a modern gun? with a smaller groove diameter, okay, and like I uh, seen in one book, the guy goes, well, I, I use lineman number two, but he's using it in a replica gun, he may be casting a bullet that is already oversized, and the uh, thumping the bullet up with black powder doesn't matter, okay, so be careful. So what I've chosen personally to do, and I kind of think it's fun, I know a lot of people aren't into reloading, you have options, you can buy loaded ammunition. I don't really know much about it, I have no experience with it. You can also buy, there's a company that makes swage bullets. Okay, I, I'm not particular, if you read the books, if you go to my book reviews, read the books, it gives you all that information where to go. Uh, I don't use it. I like to cast my own out of the alloy, use the black powder, and that's what I chose. I'm not saying that you cannot get good results with smokeless or any other way of reloading. I'm just trying one specific way, and we're going to see how the results are. And I chose black powder to keep traditional and to see what kind of accuracy I can get. Okay, because I have shot smokeless loads in the trap door with uh, actually hard cast bullets that were cast oversized. And it was alright. You know, I got the video up shooting at 200 yards, but the accuracy did degrade a bit. Things got kind of fuzzy as uh, I went on. And we'll try the same thing with black powder and we'll see what results we get.